Hey guys, this episode is brought to you by Walrus Audio. That's right, makers of the Fathom Reverb. It's deep and it's dark and it's delicious. <laughs> That's the first D word that popped into my head to go with deep and dark, but it is totally tasty. Uh, I've been loving it. I've got it on my board. I've been playing around with it, having a lot of fun with it. Uh, by now, it's old news. Everyone's seen every demo, but uh, go ahead and watch my demo for the second or third time, maybe even the fourth. If you haven't seen it yet, what you need to know about is that Ryan filmed the whole thing underwater. Yeah, I was in a scuba suit, like a legit scuba, scuba suit the whole time. It's pretty incredible. Like the, the production value is just out of control on this thing. So uh, go watch the video for sure, and uh, tell me that it's better than any of the other demos for that uh, pedal in particular. Especially, uh, who is the person that I was compared to? So- someone said that someone else did better. Oh, uh, uh, well, Rabia. Or Rabia. I can't think of how to say his name. Someone commented on my on my Instagram post and was like, oh, his, his video is better. I was like, Why would you do that? Why would you ruin my day like that? <laughs> <laughs> This episode is also brought to you by Sinusoid Cables. They make cables. And how dare you? <laughs> I wanted to see if you would say it. Cables and Smiles from Sinusoid Cables. They're the great American cable company. Uh, they'll make you think there's a snake behind you. I'm really looking forward to hanging out with the Sinusoid guys at NAM this week. Yeah. Oh, man. I, it's going to be our gear vacation. I always look forward to NAM. Are they bringing us burritos? I don't know. It was I, like kind of up in the air, and yeah, then we never really locked it down. We're going to have kind of a weird schedule this NAM, so I don't know if that's going to work out, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see. I really need a burrito Saturday morning and possibly Saturday late morning at NAM because this year's premiere event at NAM is Bo versus Rao. Rao. <laughs> Bow versus Rao. The premier- if, you're, if your last name was pronounced Ro, it would make sense. It, it would be a great rhyme. Uh, Bo versus Ro. There is a brewing competition between us and the Guitar Nerds podcast. It's more of like a rivalry. Yeah, because apparently Joe Branton can drink more than I can. Well, that's the theory anyways. Uh, so we're going to see how this plays out. I like, Maybe. I like that. The suspicion is that Steve is the bigger drinker of us two. Like, I could be a big drinker, guys. I could drink a lot. <laughs> I think that, that Steve just usually drinks more on the show. That is accurate. Yeah. Um, but anyway. I don't actually drink very much. <laughs> um, I don't know how this is all going to get filmed, if it's going to be filmed on cameras, if it's going to be live streamed to Facebook. What it is, could- it's going to be like a street fight where there's like 14 people surrounding us uh, live streaming the whole thing. We're gonna chew up all the Wi-Fi in the building. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty gnarly. Every uh, time one of you takes a drink, everyone around is gonna be like, "What? Whoa! Oh my gosh!" All, all I know is I'm coming in at six foot two, one ninety five, and Joe's coming in at whatever tiny ass thing he is. Oh my gosh! Big talk, Steve. Big talk from a big boy. <laughs> Oh, man, I don't like to compare sizes to people. <laughs> I mean, I guess it makes sense for, you well, know. Well, it's like a boxing like match. Like drinking. It's, gotta, but it's a boxing match. It's you all gotta, like mass and metabolism and everything like that. But And then geez, b- before, Louise, we start, it's, before we start, someone's got to go, let's get ready to drink. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, anything new going on, Steve, other than this impending. That's not how this works, like, dude. Booze. Co- oh, That's yeah. not how any are of this works. Are we still in sponsorships? We are. Dang, well, we got, how do we get out of this, Steve? Do we just stop talking? Yeah, that's how we usually get out of it. Hey, this is Ryan. And this is Steve, and you're listening to <laughs> crap. <laughs> you're listening to crap, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Try again. Hey, this is Ryan. And this is Steve, and you're listening to 60 Cycle Hum, the guitar, buying, selling, trading, modding, fixing, break, reviewing, playing podcast. Yeah. Pretty good one, Steve. You got there. Yep. All right. What's new, Steve? Uh, I don't have anything new right now. Really? I don't. Haven't you been been playing? Oh, you know what we didn't talk about that was new the last time we recorded, and you just didn't get into it? Uh, you finally got around to using the Sub and Up Mini. Oh, that's right. That's right. Uh, the TC Electronics Sub and Up Mini, which that has, thing has tone print, too. It does. I shouldn't mess around with that. You really should. Um, but I used it just as a straight-ahead um, whatever settings you gave it to me with. Uh-huh. 
I really liked it. You did. You used um, it with bass, right? No, I used it on guitar. Oh, dang. And uh, I really liked it. And my uh, micropog is, uh, I actually sent that out on the Inner Circle Secret Santa. Mm-hmm. And uh, I feel like I'm not losing anything with the sub and up. Uh, there's, a, there's a couple things that are, are different about it. Sure. I feel like it's gated a lot harder than the micropog is. I feel like the micropog is definitely warmer overall. And by warmer, I mean like there's something about, God, I hate to say bloom. <laughs> no, I know what you mean. Like it, that totally works for the, an octave pedal. Like the bloom of like when the effects, like yeah, senses the, the, that you're playing comes in. The micropog definitely has more of like a ramp off. But once I got used to like the hard gate, like the or at least like the tighter gate on the sub and up, I really liked it. Yeah, it's the thing I experienced with it is it just has an incredible amount of low end to the point yeah. where I was like afraid for my speakers. Yeah. It's a, it's a little weird. And, and because, um, at my, at ch- my church, we use in-ear monitors. I had to be really like, I had uh-huh. to kind of not get, do you want to shake your teeth it. out? <laughs> well, not even that. Like I just have no idea what our house speakers can actually handle. Cause right. I'm just hearing it through the ears. Were um, you running this through your, your wongs? Yeah. Dang, yeah, dude. Wand, I bet that the, I bet a small wattage amp like that would translate that amount of low end in a really unique yeah, I'd, way. Yeah, I'd put that uh, through the Wongs into the uh, my custom twelve inch. Uh huh. Um, <laughs> Is that what you call it? <laughs> <laughs> it's too early in wow. the night for dick jokes. <laughs> <laughs> From now on, you're not going to be able to talk about that cab without thinking about that. This joke. week's episode is also brought to you by Rough Draft Brewing. Yeah, uh, Steve rye a big IP, old growler. Uh, rye ale. Uh, yeah, I brought a growler, and there's not much left. Yeah, it's also this episode is also brought to you by the uh, the beef ribs that oh, I yeah. smoked Dude, for those our were, dinner. Those are great. Yeah, we're having a great night so far. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, it's kind of got me interested in other other TC minis, I guess. Um, the but, thing that's interesting about the TC minis is because they do have the tone print. Like if you use the tone print, you don't have to miss the other controls at all. Right. Like you can get all those other settings and like control all that. You just don't have those settings on the fly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, we didn't you know, go, you know, well, maybe we'll squeeze this in next episode. Okay. We'll, maybe we'll squeeze in next episode. Yeah. We'll save it. Um, uh, something I just thought of, um, write it down yeah what's new with you ryan well what's new with me is that uh some of you might remember that like a year ago i bought an ibanez rg 450 i think is the number yeah is that the number of them um so i saw it come up on craigslist and it's like oh i miss my floyd rose days i'm gonna go buy this thing and i was also getting geared up to do a demo of the uh, the keely modded metal zone the keely uh, mammoth modded one Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, this will be perfect. So I used it for that demo, and then I stuck it in a case, and uh, I I never really used it again. Right. Uh, I tried to use it for a church one time, and I was at practice using it. I was like, this is borderline irresponsible. (laughs) Because it was just like, if you you have a piece of gear that allows you to play faster than normal, you're just going to end up playing faster than normal. It was like switching from a sedan to a sports car. And not really thinking. This about is what a, this you're is doing. like a real problem that you have. It is because I've you've had do, this problem with other guitars. I will play faster than I need to if there's the ability for me to do it. So I just stuck it in the case and I haven't used it at all really. And I was looking at it taking up room up in my like upstairs area. I was like, I just got to sell this thing. I've got to start making more room around here. I've just been looking at all my gear. Like I've just got too much. I need to make room. I get rid of the old, you know, bring in the new into the new year. You know, you never know what's going to come this year. Yeah. So I listed it on Craigslist as, and I listed it for a hundred dollars more than what I paid for it. I oh, said, wow. I, I listed, no, I listed it for $75 more than what I paid for it. And I cleaned this thing up. I put new strings on it and I forget who, uh, please message me, whoever you are. Uh, and I'll send you a shirt or something like that. But, uh, one of our gracious audience members sent me a, a pickup to upgrade it. So oh. I put an upgraded pickup in it to replace the original uh, not good sounding pickup, um, and uh, so I listed this thing for two seventy five because I paid two hundred for it a year ago, and it came with a hard case, 
And I was like, no one's going to want this. I'm going to end up selling it for 225 you know, we're like 200 even and break yeah. even. But this guy emailed me and was like, hey, I'm interested in it. Mm. Uh, here's my phone number. Like, text me and we'll set this up. So I text him and he's like, here's the deal. I'll give you 300 even, but you got to drive it to me because I have a DUI. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like... Yeah, I'll do that. I'll, I'll, I'm heading up that way anyway, so I had to go to Costco. So I drove all the way up to this dude and, you know, got $300 even for it. And it was great. The guy looks like the type of person who's going to love this guitar. And he was all stoked about it, knew the specifics of it. He looked like a really young Dave Mustaine, oh my basically. Gosh. <laughs> you know, like long, uh, like metal head, blonde hair. You know, he, he fit the part. So I feel good that I cut a profit on this. I had a flip. Yeah. I did a real flip. You flipped it. I totally flipped it. 2015. And I feel good that I got that guitar into the hands of someone who, even if they're going to flip it or like working on it and flip it, I can tell that person knows about that guitar and it's going to enjoy it for the time right. that they have it. I have no idea what he's going to do with it. Maybe he'll keep it forever, you know, but I can tell that, that that guy was excited about it. Yeah. Yeah. I also spun it into an excuse to like get my kid out of the house. So, like, oh my gosh. So, like, I met this guy in a, uh, in an AM PM parking lot mm -hmm. and he, he, he walks up and he's like, Hey, let's go meet over here at the bench. And I'm like, uh, I can't leave my car. Cause my kids in the car, are like oh my gosh. climbing all over the place right now. And he's like, Oh, okay. <laughs> then I took my kid to Costco and you know, we got ice cream cones and stuff. Oh, that's cool. Turned into a whole thing, you know? Uh, so that's what's new with me. Uh, do we have any housekeeping or you want to do that later? Let's do it later. All right. Let's jump into an ad then. Let's do this thing. Yep. This first ad was sent by Brad Moses. Uh, this is, He says, this is a little project my cousin is working on. He's a much better woodworker than I am and has recently started asking a few questions about guitar building. Uh, this is, I guess this company is called Lost and Found Lumber Company. Um, and this says piano, we are repurposing into a bookshelf still needs some fine tuning and polyurethane fine tuning. Get it. Huh? Huh? Okay. <laughs> and polyurethane once the temperature is above freezing. Oh my gosh. Um, what do you think of this? It, I'll describe it. It is like a baby grand piano like turned on its side vertically. Yeah. So like you're looking at the the keys where the high keys are like touching the ceiling and the low keys are like at like table level. I don't hate this as much as I feel like I should. I don't either. And I kind of like the thought I just had is I get this because I've heard that I mean, you you see pianos all pianos all the time like in like the used section of Craigslist or whatever, like yeah. trying to sell them. I've heard that there's actual like an expiration date on pianos. Like there's a point where they, you just can't fix them anymore. They don't work anymore. Like mm, they have to be, okay. they have to be retired. I don't know why. Maybe like the, the, the steel frame inside starts to bend. Maybe it's or a quality thing. Maybe it's a quality thing. Like, or this, like everything just breaks down too much. Right. And it's like, you'd have to like completely gut it. So it's like the cost efficiency of fixing one drops over time well, so, my, so they they've taken the body of this piano completely gutted it like the steel frame's not in there yeah and then put horizontal shelves in it to make it a bookshelf and what i think is really clever is it's got two of the piano legs for legs for the table and then there's like a third ish leg mm -hmm. that is the uh, the sustain pedals yeah which i think is really clever i think it looks really neat i think if you had like some kind of music room situation uh, it could be a lot of fun, um, like as a fun thing in there. Uh -huh. um, my first gut reaction was that, like, I wonder what the stability on this is like. Yeah, if this it's falls, so tall. If this falls on you, is a life ending event. Like you're going to the hospital at least. Well, so that's the other side. That that's actually the other thing I was thinking about, and. I wonder what the weight on a piano is once the soundboard's taken out. Because, That's a good question. Because that is the soundboard is you know it's made out of of whatever they make soundboards out of. I, I have no idea. Well, there's the the giant steel frame that is in them. Is that called the soundboard? That's what I'm talking about. That's actually a soundboard. That's a that's soundboard. What all the, that's what the strings are all mounted to. Well, I know that's what they're mounted to. Is is what 
it gives it its structural stability because like all those strings add up to an incredible amount of tension. Right. But that's also like what the strings resonate on. Interesting. So it's, I didn't realize that was the soundboard. Yeah. So, I mean, if you look at, I don't know in like, like antique, I mean by antique, I mean like, you know, 17, 1800s or whatever Uh piano design, if that's what they use. But if you look inside like a modern, uh, and like 20th century piano, like that's what the oh, strings are. Yeah. That's what the strings are resonating against. There's usually like some kind of hole or something on that metal, I guess that explains on that metal piece. Why pianos have the sustain that they do. Like it's just string on steel. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I don't, I don't know. I think is that called a, a the harp. I don't, I don't remember. Sure. I used to know maybe for like a so hundred yeah I, do, I I wonder too what does this piece of furniture weigh now that that is out of it um, my issue with it like I don't know if I would well I don't play piano so I wouldn't put this in my house but I can't imagine it in a living space but maybe I just don't have you know a house that it would work in sort right because it just feels I mean a piano by itself is already bulky like you're turning this piano vertical yeah which makes it just seem overbearingly huge well that, i mean that's why i'm thinking like it's got to be some kind of like musical study right. situation where like maybe you've got like a study or like a a fun library slash office right. in your house this is for like a man cave of a pianist <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> is there, are there piano themed man caves? Well, I mean, we so, talked about man caves last episode, right? So my wife, um, my wife, uh, <laughs> she her her aunt's husband is like a professional piano player or something. Uh huh. And he, uh, I like so he has actually a room in his house. We went over there once to their house. And the room, and he ha- he has a full size grand piano, uh-huh. and that room is thermostable. Oh my god! Like it's got like a it's like a humidity and yeah. temperature controlled room. That's crazy. And it's like sealed, like yeah. there's door. You have to like open doors to go, like not just like a normal door, but like you have to actually like you have to open a door to go in there. Yeah, like well, a, like a lot like of a rooms. sealed door. Steve is impressed that the, some rooms. You have to open a door to go into. Them. I just want to live that. I just want to live that Star Trek life where the door is open for me. <laughs> There's this room in this guy's house. You got to open a door. I know. I know. I can't believe it either. You got to open this door to go in. No, I, I know what you mean. Like he has like a sealed door. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I don't want to dwell on it too long. Uh, it wasn't remember, really that funny. Remember the the. It's funny to me, Steve, because everything makes me laugh. Um, remember the project our our friend Sam had years ago, where he turned an upright piano oh, into yeah. like a uh, like a synth holder. Our friend Sam, who's now my worship leader. Yeah. <laughs> That's your what's new. I know. Is that it's, now it's you know, like our old friend Sam Hart is your new worship leader. Yeah. At, yeah. Is my old church your current church? Mm-hmm. It's pretty wild. It kind of made, when I found that out and found out that it might be happening, it gave me a couple little like pains in my gut. Ah, like, oh man, sucker. I should have stuck around. Loser. <laughs> I'm I'm stoked for you guys though. He's gonna be a great worship leader. He's a really cool guy. Uh, but yeah, he took an old upright piano and completely gutted it. Yeah, and then mounted you know his synth or his keyboard or whatever into it and made it. I think it was a piece of furniture at his old church. Not oh, a furniture. I have no you know idea. what I mean? It's like a stage dressing. It's like right. This is the holder for the thing that I do. Yeah, and it, it makes sense. It's a thing. It's Coldplay does it. Do they? I yeah. mean, it makes sense if if the 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 piano is part of your stage prop and start of your your stage look. Mm-hmm. Like I can't imagine transporting a specific well he, actual piano for a touring act. Yeah. You know? Well, I mean, but like even in your house, like key, oh, totally. keyboards are ugly. Let's be honest. They like, are. They're not, they're just... And the ones that are made to not be ugly are kind of like a joke. I mean, I guess I should say like, they're not like keyboards in and of themselves or synthesizers aren't like inherently ugly. It's that like, you got to put it on like a truss stand or like whatever Uh else. And it's kind of like, it's like guitar pedals. There's wires and cables everywhere. I can't believe the, uh, the keyboardist rig 
uh, at my church because he sets up and tears down every week. Oh, and he's geez. got like two keyboards and then he runs a laptop and then like a side little like uh, like slider sent thing or whatever. Right. And just like the amount of power cables he has and just cables in and out of things and mixers and whatnot. It's like, man, you're setting up more than I ever well, do. Well, yeah, as soon as you're, as soon as you look at, cause the guy at, at my church at our, your old church uh-huh. was trying to do piano synthesizer and iPad all at the same yeah. time <laughs> on like a mixer. <laughs> through, through like, you know, one's going in through the board, like two of them are going in through his mixer, then going into the board and none of it's lined up right. <laughs> I mean, the, the whole stupid thing about all of that is I just always came back to it and I was like, if you would have worked on this on Friday, like you probably could have figured oh, it out. yeah. Like, and then he, he sets all this up to play three songs and then not be able to make it back for the closing song. <laughs> Because he's doing other stuff at the church, which is fine, but it's like a lot of work. I've run sound where I spent a lot of time trying to dial in both the piano and the synthesizer, uh-huh. only to only only to not even have the synthesizer. Him like he right, decides right. after rehearsal to do everything on piano. Oh, I'm not going to use that anymore. So you know, it's it's what it is, I guess. But yeah, should we jump into the topic? Let's hit this topic. So this is going to be our pre nam episode because this week we are going to NAM. Uh, next week, our episode that launches won't cover NAM because we're recording it tonight. Yeah. Uh, so tough luck, but there's I'm sure going to be a lot of NAM content that week. Yeah, I think um, if we... Oh, that's funny. Um, if we do uh, NAM content... Um, after like during like if we're recording during Nam, it'll probably just be published right after that episode. Like yeah, during it'll be midweek content. I'll be dropping it as I edit it. <laughs> exactly. I, think. I don't think exactly. I'm going to set a schedule. I'm just going to like I'm going to dump this right now. Might as well, right? Uh, we we're, we don't have any hard plans. I think I do want to talk to Tim Marcus again because he just came out with that crazy oh, amp yeah. pedal. I can't believe that thing. It looks so cool. Wait, who, who's Tim Marcus? From Milkman. Oh, yeah, I know who he is, but you just started talking about him like every freaking person who listens to this show also knows okay. who Tim Marcus Tim, is. Sorry, guys. Tim Marcus from Milkman Amps. He just came out with what? It's like a 40-watt amplifier. It's a 50-watt 50 50-watt in, in a pedal enclosure. It's like a combo. Uh, it's like a hybrid tube and solid state, and then it has a digital reverb and tremolo in it. Yeah. And, and apparently the it, uh, the reverb is based on uh, what was it? But it's on one of one of his big amps, so so it's not just like a yeah. But a here's the thing: it's like you can run it like direct out and run it as like pedal in your board, yeah. Or you can run it to a guitar speaker, and then I think there was like an XLR out, yeah. Like it's got. It looks like a workhorse. There's also a headphone jack. And a headphone jack. You can use this thing as a head. You can use it as a pedal. You can use it as a recording interface. Like It just looks like the right amount of simple and brilliant combined together. And in the little video he posted, it just sounds fantastic. I don't... To everything Tim makes sounds amazing. So I'm really looking forward to yeah. checking these things out. It's literally called The Amp. And he's teasing the price on it. it he said that... like. The, it's going to be listed at like seven fifty, but then the actual street value is going to be a lot lower than that. So I, that's actually even a list at seven fifty. F- given that it's an actual amplifier that you could put on your pedal board, like that yeah. doesn't. And, and I know I've always thought you know, like if I ever spend big money on on an amplifier, it's going to be a, a Milkman or a Benson. Right. And Milkman's are automatically uh, attractive to me because he kind of like leans into like this whole Princeton vibe with right. a lot of his circuits. And that's kind of what it sounded like to me. And I could see myself using this. As yeah. A head. I think that, I think the, the Milkman, the amp is based on like effectively miniaturizing and creating headphone or line out options for existing things that kind of have already existed in the milkman world at right. least from 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 sound basis levels um 750 list like i said i don't feel like that's the worst i realize like the electro harmonics so what do you think it'll be street like you think it'll be like 
four, I'd say four to five hundred. Really, man. I mean, I don't know. If it's four to five hundred, that's a great price. Um, I mean, if it's four to five hundred, that's like I would much rather buy one of these than buy one of those Vox mini heads or something. Right, like and that. and it's got a lot of it's got a lot of options, and it kind of comes back to that question of with everything, you know, do you want to, you know, you're buying something that's made in an art and to use the colloquialism, I guess suppose it's made in the Bay. Sure. You know, it's made in, in California versus buying something that's made wherever in it. And it's a 50 watt, 50 watt amp from what I recall I'm just so stoked. With, with a bunch of options for comparison, the EHX 44 Magnum, which just has a bright or normal switch and a volume knob is already $150. Yeah, but that's not even, it's, you know, it's a, Solid state power amp in a no, pedal. No, that, that's what I'm saying. It's like just this like, is a tube amp in a pedal format, but it's it's big. Like it's, oh yeah, it's a huge pedal. It's a huge pedal, but it's an it's an actual amp in a pedal format, and it just has two foot switches. You don't turn the amp on and off. You turn the reverb or tremolo on and off. This thing basically has the exact same controls as a Princeton. Right. It's volume, uh, bass, treble, and then your tremolo and reverb controls. Like that's it. Yeah. The the concept is so simple. The applications are really wide mm-hmm. as far as it being. You can run it in your pedal line, run it as a direct out, run it as a headphone amp, or run it as a literal amp head. I'm just really excited about this damn thing. <laughs> I'm looking forward to checking it out at his booth and talking to Tim and maybe doing a good interview this time because I've done oh two gosh. interviews with Tim so far and both have been hot garbage. <laughs> Like I don't just, know if they've been garbage. They've just oh, been very man. like nonsensical. They've been like while we're recording them, Tim and I will look at each other and be like, "What are we doing?" <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, what else? What else has kind of come out? We've got the Fender, a parallel universe I'm stuff. Really excited to to try these and to get my hands on them at NAMM just because they're so like up my alley. And yeah. them coming out inspired me to finally do a video of my Fender Flying V that I've been building forever. And that just took off. I can't believe how excited people were about Well, I it. think you timed that perfectly. I did. Well, it wasn't even intentional. It was just like, now's the time. No, i got to do I it know. right now. And it's like you, you saw these things and you said, yeah, like that's kind of the Fender Flying, your Fender Flying V that kind of sits in that like yeah. neighborhood. I, I think everything that Fender has leaked uh, – this year, I say Fender has leaked. Whoever leaked, sure, it, I don't sure. know. Um, it was like these off, like coast, off offshore, like uh, retail sites. That oh, were doing is that it. what it was? Yeah. Um, I think it's all been really interesting. I think there um, was it uh, whatever the guitar is, which I guess I will disagree with you on this. Okay. The Fender the um, Meteora. The Meteora. You like that? I think it's. I I understand the headstock arguments. I just think it would look um, better with a couple different kinds of headstocks. I I uh, think somebody uh, I think Ezra Graves posted the the old Fender Performer slash Fender Katana headstock, uh-huh. which would be kind of funny to see on that. That would be pretty the the really like sharp arrow. Oh shape. yeah, it was an arrow. No, it wasn't. Yeah. yeah. Um. Or somebody else. A lot of people have suggested the Starcaster headstock. Yeah, I mocked that I, up in the I video. I think that could work out uh, really well too. I thought that looked really classy. Um. I understand people who are saying like, "Oh, why, why Telecaster?" and sure. and the natural, the black on natural color scheme does kind of like really yell Telecaster, and it re- yells yeah. like vintage, like bluesy, like it just screams a different mood than what the body is saying. But all of that aside, um, I really like the body shape. Okay. <laughs> I, that's fine. You can like the body shape, but it's just like my piece on it is still that this is Fender doing a shape that companies like Fernandez and Schechter and like other kind of like modern, more like metal-ish, like new metal type companies have been doing for 15, 20 years now. Sort of. And I it's mean, like, it's what just... What Schechter are you thinking of? Like the Sinister Gates? I forget the name of the model, but it's, it's more about the butt and shape of it right. uh, than the horns. But there's a Fernandez that is really close. Oh, yeah, shape. yeah. And there's a few other guitars. Oh, the the freaking the lace guitar, the uh, the Helix, yeah, yeah. is very close in shape. Like, there's been a lot of guitars by uh, brands that kind of riff off of 
fender style builds that have done this shape to avoid doing fender shapes. Mm, yeah. And to have Fender come out and do their own version of a, you know, a Fender lawsuit avoiding shape is is funny to me. Yeah. And it's just, I don't think they executed it as well as other brands have in the past. And it just feels a little goofy to me. I get that it's a take on their, uh, their kind of concept pieces that they did of the Vortex, I think it was called. Uh, I think. And those, uh, those came out a couple years ago. I think it was called ago. the Voyager. The Voyager, uh, but those were like, like a uh, prototype pieces, I think. Yeah, yeah. And they were done to be super futuristic with a completely different pickguard material and and other materials and finishes all around. And to see it come out as like trying to look like, you know, the most classic Telecaster imaginable mm-hmm. is a little bit just bizarre to me. People have just been ripping into me on this thing, on yeah. the on the first reaction video I did. How. As, Dare you question the great almighty Fender? The thing that's funny to me is the people, because there's been like a dozen of these, like, oh, why are you so afraid of innovation? It's like, I'm not afraid of innovation. There's nothing innovative about this guitar. Yeah, I, I it's do, just a different shape. Yeah, I, I fully agree with you on that. There, There is, unfor- you know, unfortunately, there is really nothing innovative about this. Uh, it's just a, it's a different body shape. Yeah. But there's... There, yeah, there, it's got a Telecaster pickup set with a Telecaster bridge. They couldn't have, have even been bothered to do like a half bridge. Yeah, that would have been great. Because like every, every it, other company that's like tried to take the Telecaster general concept but update it like so they want a hardtail, but they want yeah. something or a, well, they a open string, it up a so string they, through body. You open it like up they so used you can the put half bridge humbuckers in there. You know, yeah. Um, I, I am interested to see this guitar up close to see the details of that bridge because it looks a little different. Uh, I Someone was saying it's what they're using on like some of their higher-end American models or something now, but mm. I haven't seen it personally, so I want to check that out. But I got to say, in contrast, the Parallel Universe stuff, mm-hmm. I think is really cool. And what's, I think, your, what's your favorite one? I think it's a hit in the right direction. Um, well, it's tough because you have to ask yourself the question, which of these guitars would actually be most playable in my rig and which is the most like exciting to right. me. Like okay. the 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 Jag strat, that one's the most exciting to yeah, me. Yeah, I figured that would be. Uh, just cuz it's like so weird but weird in the direction I like. It feels like like an Italian import from the mm. 60s. Just how funky the pit guard shape is and the controls and just like bridging a strat shape with offset appointments is really really funky um but as far as like being like an everyday player i probably i mean i hate to say it but like one of those like les paul style telecasters really (laughs) would probably be a regular player for me in demo videos and stuff like that all right because it'd be really stable so it'd be a good it'd be a good like you know how this is supposed to sound. Like I can't use guitars that are too funky in a lot of my videos right. because people won't be re- able to relate to the pickups. Like Jaguar pickups are not used a lot. That's people fair. aren't familiar with but them. But I think of this series, the fin- so I'm actually looking at the article where they're all named. That one is uh-huh. called the Troublemaker Telly. Yeah. I think it's the worst one. It's the most of boring set. of the options, which it's is so, why because, I was- Because, okay, so here's the thing. They've made this guitar before. Sure. It's called the Fender. It was the, the Fender uh, freaking quilt top made in Korea, right? Right. And like fifteen years ago, I could probably also demo. And with, those had that had Duncan's in it. Granted, this yeah. has has whatever the current production Fender wide range pickup is in it, which is is fine, I guess. And everyone's saying like, oh, this is this is uh, supposed to look like Gibson, and and. Given that the two colors that have come out are flipping Pelham blue. I know. And, well, I was joking that vintage sunburst. I was joking that these will probably be the best Les Pauls at NAM this year. <laughs> 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 and that even if Gibson showed up, they would still be the best Les Pauls at NAM. Uh, you know, honestly, those uh, those Tellys gone Jazzmaster, I could use those in demos too. I've been really liking the Jazzmaster pickups. I I think in the, my Squire, I think overall look. So I'm and here. I mean, this is where I sacrifice myself upon the altar of popularity here we go um the limited edition telly thin line super deluxe that i think is, is my favorite looking that's one. the one with the strap pickups right it's the strat telly combo that is almost as like a steve rouse signature it kind of it's kind of 
so it's, it's it's almost there, right? It's it just needs a humbucker in the bridge. ballpark for me. And the, so the thing with this build really is that it reminds me of um, I've always wanted to do a custom uh, Carvin, which would oh, now be Kiesel. Yeah, yeah. And this is probably the closest to what I think I would build on that. You know, I th- now that I'm looking at it more and more, I'm like, I think I really do like that design but too. That, but honestly, like it's, it's going to be versatile. Honestly, it's really boring. It's, it's just the no, body shape. There's something funky about it. It feels like a. It feels like a throwback to a lot of the <laughs> uh, like the things they were doing with Tele shapes in the early '80s, like the the Mij Tellys that were coming. Well, you and know they were what, made to be more like shredder guitars. You know, you know? what it is, um, if I recall. Recall it to me, Steve. Oh, never mind. Never mind. Never okay. mind. I'm wrong. I'm okay. With Something being that's wrong. interesting about this line to me, and I haven't heard mm-hmm. or seen anyone talking about it. It's really funny to me yeah. that they've got all these guitars with offset hardware and offset appointments, not a single offset body in the mix. They're all strat and telly bodies. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas uh, I, I get it. It's like a hard swing back from what the trend has been for a while of taking offset bodies and loading them with Telecaster loadouts and, well, you know, like humbucker loadouts and stuff like that. And maybe even strat loadouts. Like this is a complete swing in the other direction. And maybe we need that now. Maybe that's going to be the new trend. And the thing is, is well, these are all listed at like 1700 euro, yeah. I think. Well, that's the 16, other 1700 euro. So this is all going to hit the market at uh, a 1600. Um, what are these going to be like? Oh, sorry, 1,600 pounds. So this is all going to probably hit the U.S. market around. Uh, I think Fender usually matches. So if that is a actual price, then you're looking at $1,600 right. for this. So really the only people who are going to buy these are people who love them or collectors. Well, this is that's another interesting angle to this whole thing is that we've seen Fender do this before. But they did it with like the pawn shop series, yeah, which was hyper affordable. I think all those came in under a grand, right? Yeah. And, oh, yeah. They were yeah. all like made in Mexico. Uh, right? The pawn shop stuff. I think the the most expensive one was like six or seven hundred. And in the pawn shop, you could even consider it an outgrowth of the Vista series, which started as you know Squire. Yeah. And yeah. so they keep testing the waters with this slowly over the decades. Like, oh, here's Vista series. Oh, people like these funky things. Let's let's marinate on this a couple of years. Mm-hmm. Oh, here's pawn shop series. Oh, people like these. We ran it for like a year or two, and people liked them. Let's think about it a while. They're- and now they've they've upped the ante again with like these this weird funky stuff. And I feel like it plays really well with Fender's identity uh, just because people are already doing this stuff. Like small brands are making builds like these. People are making parts casters and Frankensteins like these. And they're playing into this culture that surrounds Fender that's already there. Yeah. And like I said, some of these have already existed. Oh, sure. The, uh, the, the concepts aren't completely new. The Troublemaker is basically – actually, you can apparently you can still buy the Fender Special Edition Custom SMT from Sweetwater for $730. It's effectively the same guitar. Yeah, but it's, um, it doesn't have a tunomatic. It doesn't have the the full like Les Paul sort of thing going on. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't have the look. It's, I mean, no, it's the hardware is different. It doesn't have a tunomatic bridge. It has a, a hardtail strap bridge. It's got a hardtail strap bridge, so it's probably better because it's strength through body, and we know yeah. strength through body is where all the sustain comes from. I wonder what the neck angle is on on the ones with a tunomatic. Like, is it a Gibson neck angle or is it flat like a Fender? Uh, I hope it's flat like a fender because otherwise, as soon as you drop it, it's going to break. No, I don't mean the headstock angle. I mean like the neck to body angle. Oh. Um, like is the tunomatic bridge going to – I mean it's – what do they call it? An adjustomatic is the fender br- version of it. Right. Uh, is it going to be way off the body like a Les Paul or is it going to be flat to the body like, uh, like a fender guitar? I don't know. It, based on the pictures, I assume that this was carved top. Yeah, uh, like a like a Les Paul would be. So, is there anything else that's been announced for Nam that you're thinking about or excited about? What about the uh, the Chase Bliss stuff? Oh man, Joel releasing two pedals like in a week. Yeah, the Condor uh, is one of them. The Condor doesn't excite me. Um, I need to see it in person to figure out exactly what it's doing. I like the sounds it makes. I'm wondering, is this an envelope filter? Does it do envelope or is it just like, I thought it was just supposed to be an EQ. Maybe I'm no, it's got it. filter things to it. Like it's got a lot of things it can do, but my, my big question is, can it do envelope or is it more of like a, like a set 
uh, tempo sort of filter, mm. but you can do EQ with it. You know, it's, it's, I think it's like a, a utility pedal that can do weird stuff. Right. And then of course, what is it called? The, uh, the Thermae? Thermae. I see the Thermae or Thermae. Yeah. And it's a delay pedal, but from what I understand, um, there's controls to make the, uh, the, the speed of the delay rack back and forth in really specific ways yeah. so it's almost like a pitch bending pedal at the same well, time yeah it's a it's a delay harmonizer yeah but it's all it's an analog delay harmonizer yeah. the way it does the harmony is by precisely controlling that glide of right. the delay time oh okay but so yeah so part of that harmonization is you know you got octave or fifths or fourths or whatever right. but it's like it's it's precise digital control of like say if you took a, a delay pedal and you racked the knob until the repeats did a high octave mm. the digital part of this pedal does that for you in a really quick and like efficient way so it doesn't you can make it glide right or it can do like a hard chop is what i understand i just have a feeling there's going to be a line a lot around nam to check these things out because Knowing Chase Bliss, they're going to be able to do so many weird things and yeah. get sounds nothing else can get. Like Joel's just ridiculous. Yeah. I can't believe it. I can't say I've seen too much else previewed. Have you seen uh, the or, new Electro Harmonics Looper? I did see that today. Was it the ninety six thousand or whatever? Yeah. Someone asked as a potential topic, like, how big can a pedal be before it's not a pedal anymore? Oh my gosh. And I think that qualifies as not a pedal anymore. It's like a workstation. Let me look up who asked that. I'll pull it up right now. All right, so Simon Lees asked, how big and com complex can a pedal get before it's too big and complex? <laughs> and I, I think this crosses the line. It's not a pedal anymore. It's a, right. It's a it's a looping workstation. But like I don't you, I don't think it's put that right. I don't think it's supposed to be a pedal. It has pedal buttons on it, but I think they're like soft buttons. It has a bunch of sliders that you use your hands on. Like, right. I mean, you could use it with your feet. You absolutely could. But come on. This thing is huge. Well, it's like, I mean, this is a looper. It's not a MIDI controller of some type. But, but I, I do think that, yeah, it's it's... It's, it's for like beatboxers. It's for like Reggie Watts types. It's for right. uh, people who you know, like hook up drum pads and like play bass and guitar and mm -hmm. trumpet and like make like whole compositions with a looper. Right. It's, 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 a, it's his own thing. It's not just a pedal. Like a pedal is, it's like a standalone addition to a rig. Sure. This is the rig. Well, you know, it's its own rig. It's not even like this is the first time. EHX has done this. No. Granted, it's the first time they've done something this big. It's like 500 something bucks, too. It's like 575 bucks. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. I haven't looked at the pricing, but it's like they've done these very long uh, loopers before. That they have there's one that is the Electro Harmonics 45,000 four track. Yeah. Like they literally call it a four track. And it's you can 450. Thirty dollars. You can connect these things to double them. Think about mm. that. So, like, you can have like just this massive looping station. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah, this is a a part of like the EHX lineup that I do. I think I, is built to appeal to very specific yeah. people. I was thinking while I was watching the demo, though, like I use a lot of looping in my demos. I wonder if I should have this. <laughs> It's so big, though. Uh, I can't think of anything else that's come out. Oh, Ibanez has a ton of stuff coming out. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm actually looking forward to checking out, uh, what is it, the AZ line or something like that? That's got this new headstock shape on it that's like a total throwback, but it's like a super strat with a strat bridge on it. I'm looking forward to checking those out. I think they look pretty cool. I'm, I want to know if they're like comfortable players. Hmm. I'm assuming they are, but like... Are they going to be too fast, too edgy, like the Ibanez I just sold, or are they going to be more stratty? They're probably going to be, I would expect them to be fast. Yeah, I think they're going to be fast, but are they going to be like wizard fast is what I'm wondering. I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to checking them out. Uh, who else? 
who else has something new? I can't even remember. Let's move on to there's, another. There's ad. probably a lot of new stuff out there, and, and without knowing too much, you know, it, it's hard to figure out. Yeah. The neck type is a AZ oval C, so that would make me think that it is um, bigger than like a wizard, right? Uh, and that's what it, I'm hoping for. Something a little fuller. Uh, it's oh. Jesus, radius is in millimeters. I can't do anything yeah. with that on the, at least not on the. Do fly. they say the? Uh, oh, because the radius is in millimeters. Okay, yeah, oh, never mind. Um, That's what I was about to ask. What's the radius? Let's move on to the next ad. Uh, this is for a Fender American Deluxe Toronado. Were those American? They made an American Toronados. I thought oh, those were three three hundred five. So the sorry, backing up. Those are going to be a twelve inch radius. That's totally so, fine. Yeah. That's not crazy. I like 12 inch radiuses. So, yeah, yeah, this might be a fun guitar for me to check out. All right. So, we're going to add an ad now for a Fender American Deluxe Toronado. Uh, they did do these in limited numbers. Um, they as should American. have done the Toronado shape in the parallel universe. Mm. Like a Toronado with nice to like a Floyd Rose <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> no, like a Toronado with offset hardware because they did just hardtails on those. Yeah. Would be uh, really charming, I think. Um, you want to read the description on this? Uh, yeah. Fender American Deluxe Torn Auto with hard shell case, butterscotch. I've got good news and bad news. Good news. This is a sick guitar. Oh, yeah. American made Fender Tornado. Such sweet tones. Even better news. You can own it for a fraction of what you should pay. Bad news. The dude I bought it from had an epic collection of high-end acoustic and electric guitars in his studio. However, the dude had someone break into his studio five years back and totally cleaned him out. His crazy way to deal with that was to literally burn a brand into all of his guitars. Oh, my God. Fenders, Gibson, Martins, Taylors, etc. So, no. <laughs> so that thieves wouldn't be as inclined to steal them if they had less of a value. The dude, if someone breaks into your studio, they're going to steal no matter what. Yeah. The brand doesn't matter. Uh, he said the dude engineered records clearly more than he collected guitars. However, I bought the guitar two years ago for what I'm selling it to you for because apart from the branding, it's a sexy piece of American-made guitar. The branding never really bothered me as the front just simply has a circle on it. And truthfully, it's sort of made for a good story. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Cheers. We don't have a price on this, do we? It's all screen grabs without a yeah. price. Um, so there's like a circle on the body. I can't tell if that's a sticker or a brand. Yeah. Because it looks a little darker um, inside, but it could be a brand. There's something on the pit guard and on the headstock. It looks like there's numbers branded into the front of the headstock on the on the bulb of the headstock. Yeah, it's I think it says GSL. Huh. And I think what's on the pit guard is also GSL. Well, on the back of the headstock, it's branded L E M P. Which might just be the guy's name, Lemp. Like you a last like name? a last name, so G S L could be something something Lemp. Yeah. Um. The basically the guy put his initials in in the pedal or in what the if pedal, it's in the all guitar. random? Like what if it really was just I want to deface these so they're they're not attractive? Like none of these brands mean anything. And let's just get it out there right now. This is an insane way to deal with a previous theft. Right, right. Completely insane. And there's so many other options these days. Like uh, um, uh, insurance. Like he could have bought insurance instead of defacing his guitars but and it, devaluing but insurance them. doesn't give you just insurance doesn't get your guitar back. It just gives you more money. This, branding your guitars doesn't get your guitar back. Yeah, I mean, you're right. Like the initial assumption here is if my guitar looks like crap, people aren't going to steal it. But the thing is, is that like all this is, is branding. Everything else about it looks pristine. People, people, except for these four spots, people breaking into somewhere, aren't spending a bunch of time, um, like examining what they're stealing. They're just like, I'm in here. I'm grabbing, I'm running. Yeah. They're you just going to go to the local pawn shop to get whatever they can get. The, the and realistically, like if you have your serial numbers on hand, like, all this is doing is screwing the uh, the thief after the fact because then right. they can't sell it locally because they'll know that you'll see it. So they're gonna have to up. put it on reverb. No, you don't put it on reverb because then you'll definitely like the person will definitely see it. Um, put it on the dark web. No, you you go to a different city or state and pawn right. it there. Right. You know, you leave town and pawn it. Who leaves town? 
uh, bad have, people? I haven't I left know. town in a long time. Yeah, well, we're going to leave pan- town this week. Does that count? Yeah, it counts. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I just think this is a bad move on that dude's part. Uh, would you buy this guitar for I don't, a fair price? Yeah, I, I think... I don't know what the price would have to be, but... I don't know what maybe. the price of these like like clean is, so right. I'm not going to even assume to know... I was just thinking. Price? I was just thinking. Stand, fans, blah, 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 blah. I guess what I'm asking, uh, stand, like standard Fender American prices, so like eight to nine hundred dollars. If that was normal, like I would maybe go like five hundred on this. I guess what I'm asking is, it's not a price that I'm asking. What I'm asking is, would you, could you buy this and live with the damage? Oh and, yeah, yeah. I don't think it's 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 big damage and it's ugly, but there's also something kind of charming about it. It's not like someone. There's one of these on eBay cr- right now for seven hundred or best offer plus shipping. It's not like when we've seen like initials carved into right. guitars, and right. it's like, oh, that's tacky. There's something kind of interesting about the branded look that I find charming in a way. And limp is such an interesting L E M P. It's such an interesting. I'm word. telling you, man, it's just like the dude's name. But it like it feels like it means something. Like there's something yeah. mysterious about. You it. You know what it means? It means he's lamp. He's lamp. <laughs> he's lamp. What's in I his like I would, head? I would invent meaning behind these markings, you know, and be like, "Oh, that means that." Lamp sat alone, <laughs> alone in his studio. <laughs> Guitars all branded with L E M P. Piece of cake, man. I figured I was it out. Say this Mystery is, solved. This is why you never sang in any of our bands, but I don't do much better. So. <laughs> That's what I'm telling you, man. Your your favorite band reunion, I'll just take over the vocals. <laughs> so we this is a long running episode already. Yeah. Uh, our second topic is our Nam plans. Do so we just want to touch on that real quick and then get to the last? Yeah, we're going to Nam. We are going to Nam. I told one of my coworkers, I was like, I was like, yeah, my wife's going to go to Great Wolf Lodge, and I'm going to go to N- while I'm at Nam, and they're like, wait, you're Vietnam? going, to, you're going to Vietnam? Like what? Which I hear is. A really great place to go these days. I, like it's a fun like tourist thing. To go I have to no idea, but I, I'm talking to all of my like Vietnamese coworkers, <laughs> and they're like super confused. <laughs> um, no, uh, we're gonna we're going up Friday. We're gonna possibly hit the floor Friday if we get the, up there early enough. Well, I'm going up Thursday. You're, right, you're going up Thursday, and I'm just gonna shoot video all day, and then potentially have a really fun dinner. With some cool people, and I'll talk about that some other time. Oh, dang. Um, no, but I'm yeah, jealous. Shooting video, having dinner, just smoozing, doing the thing, you know, trying to do business. And then Friday, you and I are going to head back up like midday because I'm going to yeah. try to edit those videos Friday morning and get them up ASAP. How, I how, find later, out, like, how fast is your turnaround? Like, how late are you going to be up there we are, Thursday? We are planning on shooting in it in a way where basically all I have to do is dump files and publish them oh i know what you're doing on thursday now yeah yeah okay okay uh so my 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 shooting strategy is to just have the mic running into the camera so Mm -hmm. i'm not like syncing things right i'm barely going to color correct anything i'm just going to dump files and just publish yeah no that thing is that thing is for fun yeah um and then so friday we're going to head up for a half day we might make it to nam depends on the traffic we might not and then we're going to shoot up to one of our favorite after parties. Mm. I've never night. gone. This will be my first year. Really? I've never come up on Friday. I've always come up Saturday I guess early that's as hell. True. Yeah, the last two years, I've basically woke up at six in the morning and tried to hit the road by like seven to be up. Uh, well, on that, Saturday, that early in the morning, I can usually make the drive from my place to Anaheim in about yeah. an hour. You're going to love this party. It's going to be great. We'll yeah, talk dude, about it afterwards. My friggin' the favorite thing. I don't tacos. Wanna, I don't want to talk about it too much because I don't. The last year there was way too many people, and I don't want other people to get invited. Ooh, yeah, or to know about it and try to crash it. <laughs> so, anyways, then. You and me are going to be there all day Saturday. Yeah. Uh, just having fun. Yeah, boy. Yeah, going to party because we'll already have content. Mm-hmm. We might do some like simple little interviews on the floor. But we, I'm not- we, got a, we got a couple places that like we're – we have at least one booth that we're kind of like semi-scheduled to hit up. Yeah. Um, and, of course, we're going to see all the guys that we work with. Uh, on our YouTube for our, our yeah. YouTube stuff and whatever because that's – I mean you'll probably see all those guys on Thursday too. But I think I, I – think- in previous years, we've had the delusion of like, 
oh, we're just going to be in business mode the whole time we're here and be yeah, trying yeah, to yeah. like schmooze and like figure stuff out and like try to pitch to people. But I'm looking forward to just having like a straight hangout day. You know you what? Know? I, you know what I really want to do. I'm going back and forth. I'm going back and forth. Okay. To go with lay, our sponsor spot. On me. Um, part of me is thinking that I should just wear a 60 cycle hum t-shirt. Do it with a flannel because I feel like that's what Joe's going to be wearing. <laughs> not <laughs> not, not the, the 60 cycle hum part, but the, but in a lot of his videos he's wearing a flannel. You want to dress up like Joe? Um, I think you should trim your your beard and have a mustache like him. No. <laughs> Uh, well, no. then I think he should grow a beard like you. Yeah, in a week. <laughs> um, the The other side of that is, and my I got my wife looking for it right now, uh, kind of on the side. Is I might may just try to pick up a Hawaiian shirt before Nam. No, and we can just go as the Hawaiian shirt brothers. No, <laughs> is that a thing? What is is that a reference? That is no. That's just what our channel is. Oh, is, okay. Is dudes in Hawaiian shirts? I'm sure I have a shirt that would fit you if you want to borrow. Yeah, one. probably. Yeah. Probably. It's not dudes in Hawaiian shirts. It's me in Hawaiian yeah, shirts, I know, which I know. I've kind of been skipping on it during the winter just because it's been a little bit cold. Right. And I, I can wear thermals and like sweaters. And I've been just like, maybe I want to save Hawaiian shirts for the summer. Make it special. You know? Maybe. Make it a seasonal thing. Yeah. I don't know what I'm going to, I don't know what I'm going to wear. What is this? A fashion podcast? I know. Right. Um, High fashion. But we're going to, we're going to be trying to hit up just, I guess to, to preview some post Nam content. Mm hmm. Um, we're going to hit up, uh, there's a company called music area oh, yeah. that does like high end guitar cases, like mid to high end, but it's like direct from China. Like yeah. it's a Chinese yeah, they're brand. a Chinese brand that's looking. So this is, so this is a, a, what a thing that I'm always thinking about Chinese companies. There, there's some that are OEMs right. and being an OEM is great. Um, I'm, you know, I, I can't get on board with, with companies that are, you know, just selling on DH Gate or or, right, Ali, AliExpress. or AliExpress, saying, "Hey, whatever headstock you want, like we'll make it." <laughs> like I can't get on board with that, but like David Hill over on was it Guitar uh, Guitar Resource Collective? Uh huh. Um, and he's also in our group. Um, don't mention other podcasts. Please. <laughs> I mean, we don't want to cross promote anyone. No, never, never. <laughs> We would never talk about other podcasts like the Tone Mob, yeah. or uh, Guitar Nerds, or uh, Wamplers Chasing Tone, uh-huh. like nothing like that. Or ever. Gear Slum, or Gear Slum. Oh. I was waiting for you to say Gear Slum so I could say who, <laughs> 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 but my disc didn't work. My disc didn't work because you didn't do it. So uh, here I go mentioning the Gear Slum. I so, love you, boys. So like he bought one of the. There's a company that used to, they used to be called Bad Cat, but of course they kind of got like cease and desisted by Bad Cat amplifiers uh-huh. probably. Uh, so I think they're called uh, Shengze or Shengzu or something. Guitars they make what are effectively like Gibson copies, but they right. put their own headstock on it. So Music Area is making like uh, high end. Mid to high end cases, almost like a like a mono but bag. It, yeah, like a mono style or like what you Gator would get. Cases. Um, some one of theirs I think looks pretty similar, con- at least conceptually, to like my Taylor uh, Big Baby case, which right. is a heavy duty padded case. Um, so we're going to be meeting up with them and getting some gear, hopefully to demo in the future, some cases. Possibly, um, we'll see how I'm, it goes. What if they well, meet us and they hate us? Yeah, it's possible. I mean, um, I wouldn't like me if I met me. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. Um, <laughs> I'd be in love. <laughs> Go ahead, Steve. So that's one of them. Um, um, you know, there's always, oh, we're going to ha- hang out with uh, the Nanolog guys. Yeah. I think at some point. Uh, we actually have pedals in the mail from them. Really? I think he sent me shipping or like. Oh, he stuck at customs. Photos of the shipping. Yeah, because it's coming from Canada, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so we're going to be doing demos of his pedal. Remember, this is the guy that I met on the airplane on the way to yeah. Summer Nam. Yeah. Who's got a completely new analog component that he uses in his pedals. Right. So I'm looking forward to demoing those things. That demo will come out after NAM, but we'll get to hang out with them and meet up at NAM. I'm sure that'll be fun. You haven't checked out their pedal yet. Uh, it's a really neat concept. It's like they're using the pedal to sell the component. Right. In a way. It's like, oh, we've built a fuzz with you know two common components. Like mm-hmm. You've got silicone and you've got germanium in here, and then you can switch to our component 
which sounds completely different. Like it, it turns it from a fuzz into like an amp style overdrive is what I remember from summer and amp. So I'm really excited to get my hands on one and, and demo it finally. So that you guys can hear what they sound like. Uh, yeah. I think there's else? always, I, you know, there's people that, um, I don't really, it's, it's funny. Like even some people that like, we, we say this every year, like Nam for us has got gotten to a point. This is what our fourth year. Yeah. Um, where I think after really after the first year, first year, you're just meeting everybody. Well, first year we were so green. It was stupid. Yeah. The first and second year, it was like sell hard mode, honestly. Yeah, we and then, tried to sell too hard. And then last year, it just kind of became like, you know what? We, we're here, and we still kind of don't belong. <laughs> uh, but we're here. And and I think, um, I think you know, like we say every year, like the thing that we don't necessarily think about going in is just like, who are we going to see? Who are we going to see that we didn't see last yeah. year? Who are we going to see that we just haven't really seen in a year? Oh, that- the effects and pedals arena corner guys are going to be there this year. Who that? From uh, from the Shy Boys. Oh, yeah, they're going right. to be walking around. Okay, I'm cool. really excited yeah. to meet those guys. I think there's just I'm just looking forward to hanging out, honestly, yeah. and like yeah. hanging out with people and not being distracted by trying to do business on Saturday and just like yeah, soak well, it all in. Well, I mean, so you know, I, I mentioned music area like. He sent me their location. I was like, oh, that's Hall E, dude. Like, nice. You're in the best place. That's where we live. I, I realize Hall E is also where all of like the the fledgling Chinese brands that are trying hey. to break in are also at. But I'm like, look, like the basement is that, where that's it's at. But that's also where like a ton of like I told him I was like, that's that's our favorite, our favorite place is yeah. the basement. Easily, easily. Though a lot of the brands that I would say that we've always met up in the basement aren't in the basement anymore. <laughs> they're, they're all in Hall D well, now. Well, there were some that were up in Hall D and then they moved down yeah. to the basement. Hall D as in we're selling a guitar center now, so we're total Ds. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, guys. Yeah. It's going to be a bunch of fun. I'm looking forward yeah, to it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just hope yeah. I'm not sick this year because I've been sick like every you have. damn and year. And now I'm at your house where your wife and your kid apparently are dying. I think we should have probably recorded somewhere neutral tonight because <laughs> it is a big risk. I'm, oh I'm really gosh. hoping I don't get what my family has. I'm hoping you don't get it. I could And I hope that if we do get it that we are done having it by now. I could have structured that because my wife going in was like, are you sure you want to record over there? Yeah, we should have like gone to like we a could, public library or got, something. I still got the keys to my church. Like we could have gone down there. <laughs> Jeez, man, <laughs> that's a if long you, drive. If you would have said something the other day, I would have I would have worked something out. Yeah, I didn't know just how sick my wife would be today. Well, half of my work, half of the people in my work are also sick. So everybody's sick right now. It's ridiculous. Um, you got any other plans or expectations? We got the we got the pedal board party for yeah, Saturday night. We're gonna go to that party. That's always um, that's always it's it's fun, but I feel it's always like people are just like exhausted at that thing. It's like the yeah. time to unwind, like sit back, and everyone just has like blank stares on their face, and like it's been a rough week, man. Yeah, it's one of those ones where it's hard. You gotta you gotta figure out who's who's alive there. Yeah, because uh, it's hard to to do content promo when everybody just want, like when half the people you know just want to sit down and be like. Yeah, so like friggin' this company kept coming by my booth, or like, you right. know, oh man, everyone complaining about being too close yeah. to the beat, buddy. Like, <laughs> look, look, guys, like I know you told me not to be in the drum floor, but I didn't listen. I and wandered, you, and you were right. I wandered astray, and now I can't hear anything. Uh, no, uh, the the bowling party is always a bunch of fun. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Uh, and then we're gonna ride home that night. We we're mm-hmm. only staying in a hotel uh, Friday night. So uh, this will be the first year. Uh, is this no? This is. I was gonna say this will be the first year we ride together. Yeah. This will be the first year we do both ways together. Yeah. I uh, feel like we're just we're just really. I've been like, listening to a lot of K Love lately. Oh so my gosh. we're buckling down and doing this a lot more efficient. But I think our time is gonna be used a lot better. Yeah. yeah. We're like, yeah, you can stay Sunday and you can walk the floor again on Sunday. But I feel like every Sunday that we've done has been kind of a waste at Nam. It's just better for us that's, to, that's fair. to drive I, I home think, and have a day with her families on the weekends. Yeah, you know? I think for us, really, if we want to do both days on the weekend, the way to make it work 
is we need to structure everything ahead of time. And and honestly, now that like the the broader um gear community, I it's a weird thing to say. Sure. Maybe. Lay it on me, know. man. Um I I think the the small to mid size on the on the gear community, not the build, not the manufacturing side, but on the on the broader, like you're saying, Shy Boys is is planning on being there. We're going to be there. Tone Mob, Gear Slum, Guitar Nerds this year. Yeah, this honestly, it's a media blitz. This year is probably a better year to do a full Nam than last year was for us. Sure, because we probably we could have been like, hey, Sunday morning, you guys need to come over. Yeah, but or I whatever. think like. Everyone like Nam plans are so hard to keep. Everyone well, you, is you, all, like Guitar Nerds. It's already booked. Yeah, like every minute and, of and their nerds, Nam trip. And Nerds, it's tough because like Jay works for Fender, so right. he's got stuff going. Matt's got stuff going with Boss, so it's like or not Matt. Um, yeah, it, Matt, it is Matt, Matt, Matt. Yeah, yeah, Matt. Um, Matt was there last year. Yeah, Matt was, but we only got to talk to Matt for like fifteen minutes know, because right? he, he was working. Yeah, totally. You know, and and so it's going to be cool to see those guys. But the reality is, at least those two guys have real Nam it jobs. It's kind of funny that last year I introduced Matt to Josh at JHS, <laughs> and then uh, Josh, you know, got to make that pedal yeah. with and Boss. Th- yeah, I'm sure that was one hundred percent you. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I can take credit for that. You know. <laughs> But it was crazy, like, uh, after introducing them, and I told Matt about, I don't know if this how, how it went down at all for them. Oh, like, I'm, it's, Josh, I'm sure it's 100% how it went down. Jo- Josh might have already had contact with these people, but I introduced Matt to Josh, and then the boss crew showed up at that pedal builder's was party. That, when you, that was when you guys ghosted me last year, and I was just hanging out with, I think I was hanging out uh, with uh, Sophia at the Rabbit Hole Effects slash... Like pedal is the one one of the booths where it's just like fifteen different pedal builders from the East Coast. Right. I didn't I'll ghost you. Booth. I was like, "There's Matt. We're gonna record." And then you're like, "See you later." Yeah, yeah. Basically, <laughs> you ghosted us. I was like, "Nah." I was just like, "Oh, you're gonna go do a thing, okay?" And I then, wanted you to be part of it. You disappeared. I didn't disappear. I was just standing there, and you All guys right. walked away. I you did, were supposed to follow us. Sorry. <laughs> I did find you guys later when things were getting, getting awkward with the rando people walking up. I know. And I was like, oh, this is the part where I step in and be like, this is my microphone, son. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, let's uh, wrap this up, do one more ad, and get the heck out of here. Yeah, this is a man. long episode. Jeebus. Yeah. Let me find it. Where did it go? Uh, this is a Goo Gone uh, Goo Goo Dolls signed. I found this on the Ugly Guitars Facebook group, which is a great group. You should go over there and, and uh, sub to that group for sure uh you want to read it the mic yep. stand is blocking my view <laughs> i i would love to read it but i can't find you it. you can't find it all right let me uh um, pull it over here what's right. what is the description goo goo gone this m i m strat was traded to the shop yesterday it was signed by the goo goo dolls if this post gets 2,000 likes, we will post a video of us de-gooing it <laughs> with goo gone. One signature is already worn off anyway. Yeah, so so the first issue I have with this is, is that somebody got this guitar signed and then continued to play it. Right, right. Well, just, honestly, is a better use of the guitar than waiting for there to be a market for guitars signed by the Google. Right. Dolls. And the funny thing is the the one signature that's uh worn off looks to be the signature that you would want, which is Johnny Resnick. Right, right. The one person that people actually know from the Google dolls. <laughs> it's an attractive Mexican strat that white on white with white, you know, pick art pickups. It's, it's and white knobs. on white and it's it's older, so it's got some. It does have some yellowing going on. My question is, if you, if you clean off those signatures, will they be stained into the body, like as a negative? They might be. Yeah, it depends on how old those signatures are. It's the Goo Goo Dolls, dude. <laughs> it's like fifteen years old. Maybe. Minimum. Well, they're still on tour. I know, but they're come at least on. they're recently on tour. I think it's a better story if they're fifteen years old. It. It. I mean, yeah. But um, fine, they that there is a fresh signature from the 2017 county fair. I could never think of on. more than you know. I don't know. Okay, I, I just thought of a third Goo Goo Dolls song. <laughs> I only know three Goo Goo Dolls songs. Are you gonna sing them? I'm waiting. No, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe during my 
my my uh, battle with Joe Brand. Oh, we can man. we can get some singing going. I want going. you to have a couple songs picked out that you no, 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 know I all the lyrics to and that you go into there's singing. There's no songs that I know all the lyrics to. <laughs> I want you to start singing a praise and worship song. Yes. <laughs> Te- technically, I am something pro- about the spirit. Technically, technically, I am a professional worship leader. <laughs> this is just a. I think this is just a fun ad. We have talked about uh, guitars that have signatures on them from bands before, and it's just kind of like a waste of the guitar. And usually, it's on a guitar that you wouldn't want to play, anyways. And this is at least on a guitar that is totally playable and a decent guitar. I just love that this is in a um, at a store. Yeah. And they're like um, holding it ransom. And they're they're basically holding it ransom. Who guitar pedal shop? We know the guy who runs it. Do we? Yeah. I just offhand, I can't remember his name, but we we definitely know one of the guys from, from Guitar Pedal Shop. Well, I can't remember his um, name. <sighs> All right, let's get out of here. This is a long episode, Steve. It is. What's a uh, oh, let's thank our sponsors. Big thanks to Walrus Audio. Yeah. Really great job on the Fathoms. I'm having a ton of fun with it. It goes great with the ARP 87, which has become a mainstay on my board. So go check out my demo of the Fathom and everyone else's demo of the Fathom, except for that Reba dude. Reba? How do you say his name? Rabia? Rabia, because some dude I, on I think Instagram that's right. was rude to me. S- somebody's going to tell me that it's wrong, and that's okay. Because, you think he listens to the show? Because he's British. There's no way he so, listens to this show, no, right? I, I don't know. I, I don't actually mean it, Ray Bia. I don't know how to say your name, and I don't actually have feelings against you. This episode is also brought to you by Sinusoid Cables. They make cables! And smiles! And, and snakes? And they make you feel like there's a snake behind you. All right. And we're looking forward to hanging out with those sweet, sweet boys at NAM this week. Uh, This episode was also brought to you by Steve's uh, Rumble at the Brewery with uh, Joe Branton. Yeah. I did not improvise a cool name very well. Is that what we're going to call it? The Slam at NAM. The Slam at NAM. Steve and Joe slamming back them them (laughs) alcoholic beverages. (laughs) Steve and Joe, bowl buddies in the public restroom. At Winter Nam 2018. Okay. Um, so not to throw, <laughs> hey, hold it onto the toilet, throw not, it out together. Not to throw back to our to our previous. Um, yeah, guitar pedal shop is this dude Rick Tomasi. I'm I'm friends with him on Facebook. That's all I know. Okay, uh, I think he's in a few groups with me. Um, yeah, man. Uh, I don't have anything to add to that. I'm trying to tell trying us to, the songs. I'm Steve. trying to get my stamina back up right now. So we can do one more ep. Uh, no, for the, for the, for Joe. Oh, just for Joe. <laughs> oh, you're trying to get your drinking stamina. Yeah. Yeah. Stamina. All right. This week's song was sent by Mark Byerly. Uh, he's in, he was, uh, he's in a band called Farewell Friend. He says they're a folk rock band based in, uh, Greensboro, North Carolina. We released our EP grandfather clock this past week, which was back in December. Wanted to share some songs with you. We're going to share the song called tornado because this week we talked about a fender tornado um so yeah that's that i hope you guys enjoyed the song it's a different word steve i mean i I get it but yeah all right see you guys later (laughs) bye like us a gentle way to die and there's a smoking gun between father and son the only dance the old man taught me was a way to run my car stalled out under a Mississippi moon 
the needle prick here Three thousand miles too soon Now I'm drunk on the gin of Tenerife Shut on sand and the empty bottles The urn you can bury me in Somebody here who could tear me apart I need a tornado in this trailer park heart Is there a fire or a flood that for heaven's sake Turn my land, fill mind into real estate Cause I'm ready to fail, so I said myself Make up my bed in the belly of the whale Yes, I'm ready to fail So I set myself Find the skeleton's eyes in the virgin's veil Down 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 Lady Liberty fell 